Hi, I'm Johnny Nelson. I recently caught with three division world champion Clarissa Shields, who describes herself as the greatest woman of all time. An inspirational story, but a particularly tough journey. Please be aware our interview contains discussion that some viewers may find upsetting. Greatest woman of all time. Well, I am Clarissa the Guot Shields, born and raised in Flint, Michigan. Uh, just, I think the it factor comes from me just really genuinely loving boxing. And with me loving boxing, now I, I, not, I not only love to train and love to box and win, but I actually like, I'm a fan of boxing. So when it comes to what people want and what they like and what they want to see, I'm just like a resemblance to that and I feel like I'm like she Ali. I'm like the female Muhammad Ali because I can speak what's on my mind. I believe in myself 100% every day. And uh, I'm a workhorse. I train very, very hard. And I love people. I love meeting new people no matter where I'm at. If they want a picture, they want an autograph, uh, they want a hug, you know, I'm like, hey, what's up? But people don't really get that interpretation of me from me being a fighter. You know, it's like I'm very, very nice. To a fault, though. If you're mean to me, I'll be mean to you. But if you're nice to me, I'll be nice. But uh, I don't know. People like to be, you know, I guess pull my card every now and then. <laughs> so Flint, Michigan, mm -hmm. this is you growing up. There's something about your character that's made you so strong. I've got that bit of magic about it. I'm trying to get where it's coming from. I'm trying to understand it. You know, it's kind of confusing because I didn't talk a lot growing up. From the ages of, well, I didn't talk till I was five. And then at the age of 11, I started boxing. And um, I didn't really talk till I was about like 13, 14 really, to have like uh, full conversations. And I just really boxed, kept my head down and did my work. And I just had a dream to be the first woman to go to the Olympics when I was 11. Everywhere I fought at, people were just like, you're more intense than any other woman fighter we've ever seen. But where's that come from? Where, where's that? I'm, I'm assuming you're the only, you were the only girl in the gym at, at some point, initially. Yep, yep, I was the only girl so in the gym. So where does that come from? Um, I was boxing against guys that had four years of experience with two months under my belt of boxing. I'm just a natural fighter. Uh, I went through some things growing up. Like I got sexually abused when I was five growing up, and that kind of made me be really angry and confused toward people. Um, you know, watch my mom, you know, battle alcohol addiction growing up. And you know, just having to see that this is my mom, but this is who she is when she drinks. You know, having to deal with both people and having to not look at it as like, this is not just one person, you know. Um, and honestly, you know, church, you know, believing in God, going to church because with the anger that I had inside of me um, and that I still do have inside of me is uh, for it to be controlled, I have to really I really have to be in tune with, with the Holy Spirit all the time, checking my attitude all the time, looking at myself saying, look, this is okay, this is not okay. Because um, the anger, I'm still getting my anger under control. It seems like you have a lot more to say than just boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I represent, when I say the greatest woman of all time, people think, you know, like Muhammad Ali, but was Muhammad Ali only great inside the ring? Absolutely not. For him to be able to inspire a young girl like me to be able to look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm black and I'm pretty. You know, he said it back when blacks were not allowed to say that we even look good. And I mean, he was just a man of power. He was a man of sticking up for his people, a man of equality. So when I say I'm the greatest woman of all time, it's like, yeah, I got the muscles and the bronze and I got the big voice, but outside the ring, I represent um, women, women in sports, women equality, telling the women, when you know, when you go in a room full of men, you shouldn't be intimidated. Speak your truths, you know, let them know that you're here and why you're here, have a presence. And I think that um, 
a lot of women are scared of that, and I'm not. Do you like that responsibility of inspiring others? Do you like that responsibility of, yeah. of being that, 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 that black role model, especially from Flint, Michigan? Yeah. You know, I, love, I love being a role model. I love when I hear, you know, girls like Caroline. You know, she's from the UK. Caroline DeBar. Yeah, but she says, like, you know, you inspire me. I want to be like you. You know, I want to have our championships. You know, I want to be recognized worldwide like you. And representation is everything because growing up, I didn't want to be like Layla Ali. I wanted to be like Serena Williams, you know? I wanted to be like Beyonce. So now that it's other girls can be like, yeah, we love Serena, we love Beyonce, but I want to be like Clarissa Shields. It means a lot because being like, you know, Clarissa Shields and like when I look at where I come from, I come from like the bottom. I don't think people realize like what the bottom is. Like when I won the Olympics, before I left home, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't even have a bed to sleep in. Tell us how bad it was. How bad it was. What, you know, Raymond Pack of Noodles is a square. Me and my brothers and my sisters used to break it up in four pieces and share it. You know what I'm saying? We didn't even have food to eat. I've actually, you know, fainted in sparring twice after sparring because I hadn't been able, like I said, I'm a, I'm a workhorse and I'll train, but it wasn't food at home to eat. Um, I live three miles from the gym. I would get up and run to the gym. It'd be snowing, it can be hot. I made my way to the gym. Um, and like I said, just throughout the years, when I got ready for the Olympics, when I was winning the PAL tournament, the nationals, uh, the continental championships, going to the world championships, I didn't have a bed till after I won the Olympics. And that was at 17. So from the ages of, you know, 14 through 17, or even before that, I was like sleeping on floors. I was sleeping on the couch. And sometimes the couch wouldn't even have sofas. You know, like, I used to wash up with like a, a freaking sock. We didn't even have towels. Like, the regular essentials, you know what I'm saying? And people wonder like why I'm so hungry and because I have to do for myself because if I don't, if I didn't, me and my family would have been poor forever. And it was like, I'm not gonna settle for that. Like with the skills I have, I'm gonna do something with them. I'm, I have to win the Olympics. I have to win the world championships. It's like, I don't hate these girls, but it's like, they don't understand how much I have to win. Like, they don't get it. Explain the blue in your hair, Flint, Michigan. It, it hit the headlines for the wrong reasons. Explain yeah. the reason for the blue in your hair. Flint, Michigan water was contaminated with lead poisoning back in 2014. The water still hasn't been fixed. Still? Still. My family and other families still are uh, dealing with the water crisis. It's not in the headlines, but all the pipes are not fixed. The water is still brown. You can't drink or eat the water. Um, you have to use bottled water all the time. You can't even take a hot shower. You know, thank God that I'm, you know, who I am and of my stature because I have a big house in Flint, so my family come over there and I always have bottled water, shower, whatever. I, I don't get to how do people live. If that is, if it's even Man, then and now. Flint is the most resilient city I've ever known in my life. But I told Flynn that I would wear my hair blue to always bring awareness to the water crisis. I've been on the forefront my entire, my entire boxing career really, you know, from the time Olympics 17, Olympics 21, and then turning pro. And I fight on large platforms everywhere. Like now I'm here in the UK. And um, I just want to make sure that people do not forget that Flint still doesn't have clean water and that something needs to be done about it. So I told him that I would continue to fight my fight and also fight for them to get clean water by bringing more awareness to it, even though it's not making the headlines like it was. Imagine you've accomplished everything you ever want to achieve in boxing and MMA. Mm -hmm. uh, you now, your voice is your, is your fist. Your voice is, what, what would you use that for? What would you use to change it? What would you use to, how would you use it to inspire others? What, what, would, what is your passion outside of boxing? Well, I don't really know what all I want to do in boxing. I don't know. I think five-time division world champion. I think six-time division world champion. I think being undisputed in three different weight classes instead of two. You know, I don't, it's, it's so much. So I don't really know where the end mark is for boxing because I can say, I can't put a mark on it because I can really accomplish everything I want by the time I'm 35, but I don't know what all of that is. I mean, it may be more than what I, what I think, so I don't ever put a cap on it. As far as the MMA, PFL World Champ 2023, of course. But um, I think for as far as I, I like, like outside the ring, as far as in my voice, 
I just want to continue to speak up for women, letting women know that it's okay to be themselves. You know, it's not a certain kind of woman you have to be. Like, I don't, like, they try to put you in this box. And they say all this crazy stuff, like, they want women to be skinny, petite. You got to be nice. You can't talk too loud. You can't be too aggressive. You can't curse. Like, they put this, they put this cap on you, like, this is the box, and this is the woman, and this is all the woman can be. And if you're outside of that box, they look at you as if, oh, you're not the ideal woman. You're not good enough. Women just being themselves and not letting social media, fans, or anybody change them or making them be something that they don't want to be. I'm more for pleasing yourself, right? And doing what's best for you. You have to do what's healthy for you. And I think that a lot of women just, they just don't want to do that. And I want to be a, be a woman to speak about sex, to speak to sexual abuse survivors because even though I'm 26 and it happened to me when I was five, it still bothers me. And I want to inspire women to just like have those hard conversations, free themselves and just know that when you walk around angry and mad and saying like, oh, I'm this way because this person attacked me or this person abused me, you're giving them power over you. So I'm always like, take the power back. That's just my main thing, like take the power back. So I think with my platform, I would speak on that. And um, I want to train people. I want to train girls, I want to train guys. We, um, we starting a boxing league in Flint uh, pretty soon, the amateur boxing league. I love kids, I love people. And um, I wanna have a women's self-defense class because I feel like more women have power like me with the muscles and being able to protect themselves. Maybe they'll feel comfortable being themselves. Not that they gotta fight nobody, but just knowing that can't nobody walk up on you and do whatever they wanna do to you. It gives you a different kind of confidence. Are we gonna lose you to MMA? Um, maybe for a short while because um, the sports are so serious, boxing and MMA, I can't mix the two. I have a MMA fight in November, and then the PFL World Championships is in 2023, like kind of like mid-year August. So I'm spending all that time to get ready for the PFL World Championships because, as everybody know, I want to win. So in order to win, what do you have to do? You have to train, focus on what you want to win. So I have to practice my wrestling, um, some more jujitsu and add, add all that to my striking. And I believe that I can win the PFL World Championships in 2023, but it's gonna take, it's gonna take me away from boxing. Clarissa, it's been an absolute pleasure. Same. Stardust, that's the word, stardust. All right, the it. <laughs> the it factor, the it factor. thank you.